Jerry, she's in there tight, man. We're gonna take her to you. Yeah. All of our guys, all of you, all of you made plays that helped to win the game. All of you. And it was a great team victory. I'm happy as the ticket for you. I want you to understand one thing, though, men. We have not won the Big Ten Championship right. yet. This is a big hurdle. This is a big hurdle for us to get over. But we're healthy, and we're eager, and we're tough, and we're going to finish this season. We're going to finish with a flourish, and we're going to finish tough, and we're going to get better, and we're going to stay after them until we win the championship again and back to the Rose Bowl. That's our goal. Yeah! A special Michigan replay look inside a victorious Michigan locker room after the Wolverines defeat Illinois in Champaign 24-10. And, Bo, you get emotional after these games, these big well, we gotta We got to keep that camera out of the locker room. <laughs> First thing I notice, I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, a, it was such a big win. It's such an emotional win for the kids, especially going down to a hostile stadium to a group of Illini that thought this was their year. Big win. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be, Jim, and, uh, and I thought our team played a, a great team uh, effort, great team victory. Um, we had to do some things there in the second half to pull that game out, and uh, our offense responded, our defense played better in the second half. I was really proud of our team. I guess when you looked at the game going into it, it was supposed to be a defensive struggle. Michigan and Illinois, one and two in the conference and yet the offense is dominated early early i mean there were some plays broken early uh for example this is our second play from scrimmage uh tony bowles gets a couple of blocks and breaks it out and and uh tony was mad he got caught from behind here he blamed it on these collars that they made him wear where he's got a sore neck uh big gerard bunch uh, dives in and uh scores the touchdown and we go ahead seven nothing good to have him back and running hard great and that drive jim was three plays 76 yards and seven to nothing score but here comes mr george george came right back and uh throwing the ball uh, brilliantly uh, mixing up a few runs here's a 28 yard run from scrimmage uh that's the longest run for them um uh, from scrimmage and uh, that's embarrassing. We don't like to be run on like that, but that was a big play for them. Came back with a power sweep from the three yard line. Griffith dives in for the touchdown at 7-7 in the first period. First two drives and the defenses didn't look like they were gonna get it done this day. Well, uh, when you have defenses like that, the thing you gotta understand is it takes a little time for them to adjust. Both of the defenses adjusted pretty well. That was a draw play uh, by Michael Taylor. He comes back and hits Chris Calloway who makes a Fine catch for an 11-yard gain in the first down. Uh, Leroy Hoard on the power sweep runs hard here, gets hit right there and runs through a tackler for a good gain. Um, we're forced to punt, and we punt the ball, and uh, unfortunately for Illinois, they roughed our kicker. And as long as that leg's in the air and you hit him, why, you're going to get the penalty. So it gave us a first down, so we came back, did an 11-yard gain. To, big uh, third, third down ball. play, too. Big one. Here's um, J.D. Carlson kicking a field goal to give us a 10-7 lead. His 12th consecutive field goal, uh, which set a uh, Michigan record uh, that was held uh, by Mike Gillette. Into the wind, big kick. Into the wind, and it was a great kick. Uh, they come right back, and here's Bellamy almost going all the way. That's a 41-yard pass reception uh, that gives them great field position. We go to the second quarter, but you hold. They go to the field goal and make it to make it 10-10. Just three seconds into the second quarter, so the, uh, the defenses really haven't stopped anybody yet. Well, not really, and, uh, but they've been, uh, they've been hard to move on, but uh, here was a blitz, and um, I thought Michael Taylor and uh, Greg McMurtry teamed up real well on that one. And talk third, about some third down efficiency. This was a great drive for uh, that. Third and seven, here's a great catch by McMurtry again uh, for a big gain. Fumbled the ball there after he hit the turf. But it was called dead and covered by us anyway. And maybe the best run of the day. Third and four. Here's a screen pass to Tony Bowles. Runs inside two guys and breaks a tackle. Comes outside and keeps right on going. Uh, head butts a guy at the <laughs> 11. And, uh, and uh, that was a great uh, run by Tony Bowles. And then a little trickery on your part. Well, this is a reverse. Desmond Howard coming around on the reverse. I thought he was going to score. He got tripped up uh, at the uh, two-yard line. 
and then Michael Taylor on the option key takes it in for the touchdown, and we take a 17 to 10 lead at halftime. At halftime with the 17 10 lead, and the defense not really stopping Illinois. How did you feel? Did you feel comfortable, or did you feel like you had the thing working the way you wanted it? Well, first of all, we were moving the ball. I'm always concerned about that. I know the defense will tighten up the uh, second half, and I always feel if we move the ball, scoring 17 points the first half, that we were going to have a chance to win this game. Well, coming up next, the second half highlights and the big drive. But first, we hear from Michael Taylor, who talks about the big plays. They were very big, but they had to be made. You know, getting big plays from the Jeff George and their offense, you know, we, we knew that the only way we were going to be able to pull this game out, we couldn't really count on our defense to keep pulling us out of tight spots. So we just had to go out there and, and we wanted to sustain the ball and keep the drive going. And that's why we huddled together and we said, you know, this is for the championship. Let's take 80 yards for the whole gusto. And uh, that's what we did. And I, you know, we was able to come away with a touchdown and, and that's what happened. Yeah, we uh, set, settled down, made some adjustments. I think at first, you know, we were a little nervous. Uh, to be honest with you, that probably was the worst half, first half we've ever had this year. And uh, But we buckled down and uh, got together and just, just came out for the second half and played well and, and did what we had to do. That was, of course, J.J. Grant talking about how the defense came out in the second half against Illinois and shut them out, which was not any small thing to do. And Bo, having J.J. back in that inside linebacker position was big for this game. Well, we need uh, not just his ability as a linebacker, but his leadership qualities. And having him back in there, I think the performance of a lot of people around him was probably better. Going into the second half, what adjustments were made defensively, and how did you perceive the second half going? Well, I don't think there are any you know, adjustments that are going to astound the television audience here. <laughs> Nobody's going to be astounded by your great coaching ability? I, no. I think that, uh, that our defensive coaches just uh, tighten them up a little bit. We had people on people, but, uh, you know, when he pinpoints those passes, that's pretty tough. Now, here's uh, an interception by Michael Taylor. He overthrew Desmond Howard, and, and Jones, their fine defensive back, picked it off. He got the ball at the 31-yard line, and uh, now... The advantage, of course, is with Illinois. They hit this pass at the 20. He takes it down inside the 15-yard line, and they are on the move. Third down and four. Uh, George back hits his pass over. The guy caught it with one hand. I didn't think he caught it first, but uh, as I looked at it, he, he hung on to the ball. Fourth and one. This is the key play. George goes back to pass. Uh, we had him pretty well covered, uh, overthrew it, and uh, consequently, uh, their drive was stopped and uh, saved the day for us there. Were you surprised that they threw on fourth and one? No, not really. Uh, you know, if you, have, if you have Jeff George, you got a real good chance <laughs> on uh, fourth and one. But speaking of big plays, this is the drive that puts it away. With seven That's minutes right. left to go and a seven-point lead, you had to get it done. And we had 80 yards to go in seven minutes. And uh, Michael Taylor on the option, on twice on the option, once for 13, once for 15, were very big plays. Here's big uh, Gerard Bunch, who we certainly welcome back after missing five weeks. Made his presence felt with some tough runs inside. There's the option again. And a key strategy move, the option out of the I formation. Yes, we hadn't done that before. We put that in this week and quite successful. Here's uh, Bunch running very hard inside. And uh, we're moving the football now, Jim, and like uh, we like to do, rushing it. Here's Tony Bowles breaking tackles, going into the end zone and scoring uh, the clinching touchdown. It's 24 to 10, and uh, we're in command. Two minutes and 20 seconds left. George goes back to pass, and Trip Wellborn intercepts for uh, Michigan, his first interception of the year, by, I might add, and uh, that uh, finishes their opportunity to win. Now that last drive had to be as pleasing to you as I can think, uh, because it was all on the ground, the game was in the balance, you called the offense over before you went on the field okay. during a timeout, right. and said, this is this the is time, it. and they responded. This, this is the uh, key uh, situation, seven minutes, 80 yards to go. We have to get points on the board. I don't care whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, We've got to get in position, to, and we've got to take time off the clock. Well, that drive took uh, a little over five minutes, 
And uh, so by the time that we had scored to take a two touchdown lead, there were only two minutes left, Jim, and that, that put the game on ice. And you enjoy that kind of football probably more than anything, don't you? The fact the game was on the line and uh, we're in a battle. This is what it's all about. Well, it, it, it was the, the type of situation where uh, if you don't have a running attack, you're, you're in a hit and miss proposition. If you have a running attack, you can move the chains, you can control the ball, you can eat up the clock and you can put yourself in position to get the points that are going to win the game. And the other thing I think positive about the drive is the fact that the offensive line had taken some heat over the course of the year, but when it got down to winning a big game on a hostile field, they got it done they delivered. Too. And, 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 and let's make this point, Jim. We're not running against an ordinary college defense. This is one of the best defensive teams in the country, and uh, particularly against the rush, and uh, that's why putting 266 rushing yards on that defense is means that our offensive line uh, has improved an awful lot. They certainly have, and Michigan gets the 24-10 victory over Illinois. Yeah, you know, we knew that was, they was going to come at us a little bit, you know, so we kind of went to the wishbone and kind of just trying to run the clock out, try to get first down. If we get first down, we can run the clock out good, and exactly what happened. We know we had a couple big breaks where we had holding and so forth, but it was we hurting ourselves, so we just knew we could stick with it off as the careers right to the occasion. Go back in there again. You oh. ready? We're not letting them in that end zone. Oh. Oh. Great effort.